Hey, how's it going? So we're looking at today at GPS and we're in our, we're doing a GPS lab for lab number seven. And basically what we're doing here is we're trying to learn how GPS measurements can vary over time. This is per how people figure out that error where they say, oh, a GPS has 10 to 15 meters error. Uh, WAS enabled GPS has two to three me meters error. Uh, differentially corrected GPS has one meter error. So we're gonna calculate this error um, using basic statistics um, from our position. So um, basically, uh, you w already went out and so to do this lab, what I'm going to show here is going to be step number two, the Excel work. So you've already went out to the field, uh, collected uh, 25 or 20 points uh, for GPS and you recorded them in degrees, minutes, seconds because the GPS unit will give you a more accurate reading if you record it in degrees, minutes, seconds. Um, and then now, and, and you spent at least one minute between each point. And so now you're going to enter the data into Excel and calculate the error. So for our first step, we're going to go ahead and launch up Excel. And I'm just going to launch a blank workbook. And what you want us to do first is have this top column um, show exactly degrees, minutes, seconds, what, to, to fill out exactly what you've uh, what you did in, in the field. So, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to put uh, longitude um, degrees, longitude minutes, longitude seconds, and then the longitude in decimal degrees, and then latitude degrees, latitude minutes, latitude seconds and then latitude in decimal degrees. So basically you collected um, your readings and you wrote them down so now you're going to type them in into uh, into ArcMap or into sorry it's, it's to Excel. One thing that you should also put in here is number for point like an object ID so I'm going to go here and put um, ID number and so remember we, we collected uh, 20 points um, so I'm going to go here and uh, put in one, two. This is a pretty cool trick if you want to number stuff. So I just do the first two, highlight them, and then I go to this little corner here, and uh, you see how the mouse changes to a little black cross? I click on that, and then I expand, and that will count out the rest of it. So I did 20 points, so there you go. 20 points get added in. And it's just a... You know, show me which ID point I'm having to match what I have on my on my field notes. So um, basically, on my field notes, I'm going to type them in. And so um, I know it says uh, 97 degrees uh, west, but that's truly a negative 97. So I'm going to go ahead and add a negative in front of it. And all my readings were negative 97 um, for the minutes. I had all my readings at uh, 39 also, so see how I'm typing the first one, I go here to the corner and then I can expand it and it'll auto-complete it. And then for my seconds, that's where I had some uh, variation, so I'm going to type those in. So I'm going to type that in and you can see here I have like 56.5 seconds, 56.4, and you can see like the numbers varied a little bit, um, but near the end it was pretty consistent, 56.5. And this is, you can uh, see like maybe satellite changes, um, time for the uh, GPS unit to get very good calculations of, of all the uh, satellite uh, trajectories. So, um, and remember whenever you lo turn on your GPS unit, you left it on for a few minutes for it to download those things. So there's five minutes that I didn't count here. So I spent a total of 25 minutes. But So basically now you can see I have longitude uh, in degrees, minutes, seconds, and now I'm gonna type in my latitudes. Same thing, um, I had all 30s for my degrees, so I just type the first one. I click on this auto expand, it expands it. Um, I had 38 for my minutes, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that too. And then my seconds varied, and uh, so I'm going to type those in. And remember here, <coughs> actually all these here should be negative. So I, I'm going to just change this back to, to 97. I'll change it in the formula. So because um, this is this is negative 97 because it's 97 west this is 39 west this is 56 west 
So I'm just gonna leave it like this, and then afterwards in the formula we'll fix it. But here in, in latitude, we're in the northern hemisphere, so everything's gonna be positive. So, um, and then we're gonna have the latitude second. So I'm gonna go ahead and type those in too. <clears throat> so now I have all my degrees, minutes, and seconds. The so the major issue with the degrees, minutes, seconds is that <coughs> ArcMap is gonna like decimal degrees, and also for our calculations. We don't want to have to convert minutes and seconds. We just want to have to convert one unit. So we want to change everything to decimal degrees. And the way we're going to do that is through the, the formula functions in Excel. So if I go here to the very first line, um, let's do latitude first because it's the most straightforward. Um, if I go to the very first line, I can use the um, Excel uh, formula that you see here in your uh, lab manual. So I have here converting DMS to decimal degrees. So you see decimal degrees equals degrees plus minutes divided by 60 plus seconds divided by 3,600. Right, so what we want to do now is we want to go in here and calculate those. So what I'm going to go, I'm going to go in here to this I and I'm going to say, okay, it's equal, decimal degrees equal to degrees plus the minutes divided by 60 plus the seconds divided by 3,600. And after I have my decimal degree. And so since I typed this in the formula form with the, uh, you see like when I click, they highlight. Um, one thing that's really cool is that I can, uh, I can click on the corner here and do that autocomplete again. So you see when I drag this down, uh, when I click here, for example, the bottom one, you can see it's pulling the values from its corresponding row. So um, basically now I want to do the same thing here, but remember this is in the Western Hemisphere, so we have to have the negative sign, right? Because it said the W on the decimal degrees. So here I want to say um, this is equal to uh, minus uh, 97, uh, minus 39 divided by 60, minus 56.5 divided by 3,600. So degrees, negative degrees minus uh, minutes five by 60 minus seconds by 3,600. And now you see I have a negative 97. And this is good because I see I'm in the Western Hemisphere uh, and Northern northern Hemisphere. So um, North and West, that's where uh, the United States is. So if I, again, drag this down, it goes through and calculates it all the way through here. And then the last thing that I collected was the, the height uh, position. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there too. Um, height. And this one I actually collected in meters. So this is nice because we won't have to do any uh, conversions. So I went ahead and typed them in here and you can see the meters now. So the first thing I ask you to do is to calculate the averages and the standard deviations. Um, you can see here in the lab, uh, compute the averages and standard deviations for these different options. So um, what I'm gonna put here is I wanna add a new uh, tab here, a new line saying average, and here a standard uh, deviation. And then what I wanna do is I wanna call into Excel functions that calculate average and standard deviation. So if I put here an equal sign, um, I go to the bottom of this, and I put an equal sign, and I start typing average, a, here, average, you can see that you get this average function, and it says here average returns the average arithmetic mean um, of its arguments, which can have names, arrays, or references. So I want that one, so I'm gonna go ahead and click it, and you can see it kind of gives you an idea what it's supposed to look like, number, comma, so I have average, and then I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it, an array in there. So I'm going to click on this first decimal degree for longitude, and I'm going to hold my mouse button and drag, and that's going to create an array. <coughs> you can see here from E2 to E21, and then I'm going to close my parentheses. And then I'm going to have the average value generate there. I can do the same thing for standard deviation. I say equal, and... <coughs> I can look here, standard deviation. I 
I don't think it matters which one you use. These ones are saying they're becoming decrepit. Um, so you're not supposed to use standard dev anymore. But let's see, I'm on, I want to use it. So I'm just going to click on it. And you see close parentheses. And it still works. Good. So you can see here the standard deviation also that, that got calculated. Um, now what's cool again is that I can use that that uh, copy paste because you see this was a function here average for this line and I want the exact same thing here um, average of this so if I copy this and I paste it here I can see that it just regenerates the formula for that line so now I have the average here and I can do the same thing with uh, the standard deviation. And you can see like now, if I double click it, it's pulling the standard deviation there. And I want it here too. So what I could do is I can even just use this autocomplete little black cross and drag it over. And you can see I'm pulling my st average and standard deviation from there. So what are the units on here? So we have the average height here, 232.4 meters, right? And our standard deviation, which we're using to, to represent our error, is 1.42 meters, right? Here, though, these are in, in degrees. And remember, I told you many times this semester that you should never calculate length in, de in degrees, right? So this calculated our horizontal error, but now we want our vertical error. Uh, sorry, this calculated our vertical error. Now we want our horizontal error, but the longitude degrees are not going to equal to the latitude degrees. So what we have to do is convert these degrees um, to meters, but what we're going to have to do is we have to use the geodetic constants for a WGS-84 ellipsoid. Um, remember we set the, uh, the GPS units to WGS-84, so all of our decimal degrees that were given to us were based off of that ellipsoid. So um, there's a few parameters that are very important in calculating the uh, the ellipsoid and that's going to be the the uh, equatorial or semi-major Earth radius, right? So what the radius of the Earth is, and um, we're calling that a. So we're calling that a. I'm just going to go here and put my a value. And so that's how that's this, that's the radius of the Earth, um, and then we also want our first uh, essential. Uh, first eccentricity squared and that's what we're calling our ES value um, so I'm just going to take that and and put it into my uh, Excel and um, with those two values um, including so those are our geodetic constants right um, but then there's also constants that are that are related to our position itself and that's what we're that's our radius of curvature the prime vertical and our radius of cur curvature the prime meridian and those ones we're going to have to actually calculate um, those are our m and our n values and um, we can use the a and es to calculate them and you can see these these formulas based off of our our lab here so um, this is the formulas that we're using So I need to convert my latitude into radians. So actually, there's another function called radians that I'm going to call. See, so RAD, and you see it says convert degrees into radians. So I'm calling out my radians function, and from my radians function, then I can go ahead and choose my uh, latitude. So I go here to my latitude, and I select it in decimal degrees. And then I go ahead and close that parenthesis, and I close it a uh, second time. Wait, no, first I need to square this. So go ahead and put a caret and two. That's going to square uh, the radians. Actually, you want to do it, I messed up. You need to set again. You need to put a second close parenthesis, and then you need to square. The reason why we're doing that is because we want to square all everything that's within the sign. 
right? And then afterwards, I want to close this parenthesis. That's going to put me at all of this. And then I want to go and raise it to the three halves, which is which is cubing it and square rooting it at the same time. So I'm going to put a three and divide it by a two. And then close my parenthesis and close my parenthesis. And then those are, that's my formula. So I hit enter. That gives me my corrected radius of curvature in the prime meridian. So this is based off my location. I need to do the same thing for the end value. So I go and put it in. This is my radius curvature in the prime meridian. That's going to equal to, again, I'm pulling from this formula right here. So that's going to equal to A divided by the square root. square root of 1 minus the eccentricity uh, times the sine of the latitude and radians. So again, we need to call our radian function. Close the parentheses close it one more time and then we want to square that whole thing and then close parentheses so when we're squaring we're actually only squaring this sine portion and now we have our corrected uh, radius of curvature in the prime vertical based off our location the results I'm getting here are going to be based off location so if you're not looking at you know my exact location, you're not going to get the exact same radius curvatures. Your radius curvatures are going to cha change based on where you are in the world. <clears throat> but now that we know the M and that we know the N, we can calculate the horizontal error. And basically, that's where we look at this relationship, right? So distance east to west and our distance north to south. Um, whenever we calculate those two errors, then we can use our horizontal error. Uh, formula, which is just going to use our uh, use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate it. So basically, <coughs> we're going to go here and we're going to say our distance, our error. So now we're going to calculate our error, and we're going to say our error is equal to our distance east to west, which is going to be the change in longitude in radians times the n times the cosine of latitude in radians. So I can say here de is equal to the radians, again converting my degrees into radians, radians of longitude times n times the cosine of the latitude in radians. Again, I need to call my radian function and then I choose my latitude and radians oh actually here I messed up I need the change in longitude and not the longitude the change in longitude is going to be my standard deviation so this is equal to radians times the standard deviation, which is my change in longitude, times the end value, times the cosine of the latitude and radians. Good. Close parenthesis. Nice. So I can see my change, er, my, relate, my change in uh, distance from west to east was 2.7 meters. Now let me do my distance north to south. That's just going to equal to my change and latitude, and this one, in radians. So I want to say equal to radians, my change, and then I want to multiply it by m. And then I get 1.8. And then finally, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate this, and this is the relationship of the triangle. Um, There we go, 
Pythagorean Theorem. Let's just go to Wikipedia. I'll probably give a good view. But basically, we know the A and we know the B. The B is our north to south and the A is our east to west, right? So we want to know this error, which is our C. So basically, the Pythagorean Theorem states that the relationship between C, B, and A are all equal to, are related um, with uh, when you square the sides. So basically if you square A and you square B, it's going to equal to the square of C. So if you want to find C, you just take the square root of A squared plus B squared. And um, if you look at the uh, horizontal error for one standard deviation, you can see that. That's what I do. So we want to go here and say the horizontal uh, error is going to equal to the square root SQRT square root of DE squared and we square by putting the caret 2 and then DN oh, plus DN carrot 2 squared. And so we get the total horizontal error is 3.2 meters. I go here and I say my vertical error, which is just this number here. No con no unit conversion needed. It's, it's just going to be the standard deviation of our height measurements, 1.42 meters. So you can see that in this case, in this GPS that we calculated, we found a horizontal error of 3.2 meters and a vertical error of 1.42 meters. So I want to hit save on this. I'm going to go ahead and save it in my, my H drive, GIS folder. Save. Okay, weird. Doesn't like that. Well, oh, you save on my desktop then. No. Very strange. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so I saved it. I don't know why, but it worked. Um, so now this is ready for for uh, my final product. So you see, like this is how error is calculated. So we see that we have 3.2 meters horizontal error, 1.4 meters vertical error. And basically now I want you to uh, make a map of this. Um, so the thing that I want to show you how to do is to how to add this XY coordinates into ArcMap. So um, remember ArcMap, uh, we want to have a very uh, clean coordinates. It doesn't like things like a very clean Excel sheet. It doesn't like this kind of stuff. So um, I'm going to add a new sheet here. I'm going to call this sheet, uh, rename it, and I'm going to say for ArcMap, or maybe actually this be even cleaner than that, and just call it ArcMap. And this one I can just rename, and I can call it Excel. And um, basically, the two the two columns that I want are going to be from here and here. So I just want to copy. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to ArcMap. One and when I paste it, I'm not going. I'm going to paste it differently. I'm going to paste it as values. So I can get this option by going to Paste Special, and I'm going to choose Values. Or if I right click, I it, the Excel will give me option here to do Values. And I want to paste values because I don't want the formulas. With ArcMap, is better not to have the formulas. Um, then after I even do that, I want to go through here and clean this up. So. I might go here and change this to long D, long M, long S, so forth. Cleaning up these uh, these titles um, so that I don't have to worry about errors happening in ArcMap. Because ArcMap doesn't like, it's very sensitive. Um, so let's change all these. And then the height, I'm just going to take off the meter portion of it. Okay, so this is clean for ArcMap. So I'm going to hit save. 
and then of course I have to close it. So I'm going to go ahead and close Excel. Make sure you always close Excel whenever you're working with it, with it in ArcMap. Launch up ArcMap. So I have ArcMap running. Um, I go ahead and uh, save it. Let's just go ahead and save my ArcMap to my H drive. It's always good to save um, GPS. And then, so the first thing I want to do is I want to add a base map. So I'm going to go here, add a base map. And I want to choose, I'm going to choose imagery with labels. And then we have a uh, nice world. And then what I can do now is I want to go and add my XY data. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say add data and I'm going to go into my H drive, which I don't have connected. So I'm going to use this folder, connect to folder, go and connect to my H drive. Now I have my H drive connected. Go to the GIS folder, my lab seven, and then in my GPS Excel, you see a GPS Excel spreadsheet. When I go in there, I see that those things I renamed help me out a lot now. So I'm saying, oh, cool, ArcMap one, not the Excel one. So when I add that, um, you can see this here. Um, anytime you add Excel, instantly open it up and check it out. You can see I have my ID, I have my longitude and my latitude. And these are the points that I want to map out. So what I want to do is once I have it in this format, I can right click and I can say display XY data. So I just right click display XY data. Um, it tries to be smart and tries to choose the fields for you. But we have ours called long DD. That's our X field and lat DD is our Y field. Always remember that X is longitude, Y is latitude. Um, this here though is, in this information right now is wrong. Remember we were in WGS 84, coordinate system, no projection, and you see here it's projected right now. So we wanna click on edit and we wanna scroll up here to uh, geographic coordinate systems, um, go to the world, and then here you'll find WGS84. So I hit OK. That's better. And then I hit um, OK. And it's going to ask this uh, object ID field. That's OK. Just say OK. It's fine. So our points show up. I can like zoom to the layer now by right clicking and zooming to layer. Uh, quickly look at it. And you can see my points are spread out. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see where my points were taken. Give it a second to draw. So you can see my points showed up here, and here we got the uh, uh, Smith Library Center. Here's the GIS lab right here. So just right outside the GIS lab, a big open field where the, where the points were taken. And this is actually a really good area to do points because it has lots of open sky. Um, not many buildings blocking it. You don't see m many uh, maybe electromagnetic uh, interference like things from microwaves or uh, cell phones. Um, since you're off the sidewalk, people won't be walking by with their cell phones. And you can see the GPS coordinates that were taken. Um, one thing that you should always do uh, with your with your GPS uh, and at the coordinates, anytime you add something into Excel like this, and I think I tell you to do it here, turn in the shape file is that you're going to want to right click your ArcMap events and go to data export data it's very important to right click data export data as soon as you get it in there and um, what you do just go to your H drive and your lab 7 um, folder and here you can just call this uh, uh, GPS points save it. The reason why you want to do this is because this is all virtual right now, but whenever you make it into a shape file, it becomes a permanent data set. And this is better. So then afterwards, you can make a map from this, a map composition. Uh, remember, do things like add in tables and so, so forth. But basically, this is lab number seven. Um, remember what we did, uh, we used Excel, right?
We used Excel to type in our points. We converted those into decimal degrees with this formula um, where we divided the minutes by 60s and the, the seconds by 3,600. Remember that the longitude was negative and the latitude was positive in our case because we were in the, in the western northern hemispheres. And um, then we took that and we did averages to find out the, the average point. Um, and then we did standard deviations for the errors. Um, with those two values, we used a geodetic, uh, co like a con constants um, to find the uh, the radiuses at our locations, our M and N, and then from that we used that to calculate the with these formulas um, to calculate the the error from north to south and east to west, and from that we used the Pythagorean theorem to find the horizontal error. So we got these as the errors. Remember we copied this and then we pasted here as plain text to get ready for ArcMap. And then once in ArcMap we added it in, right clicked, we displayed the XY data. We made sure that we set this to just WGS84 by clicking on Edit and choosing WGS84. After that we found our points and now we move on to uh, Export Shapefile, make a map and zip that all up and send it to me. So um, good luck with your lab and be sure to email me if you have any problems.